Thomas. Hi. It has been amazing. Mm -hmm. But now it's time. Time to head back. Here we are, out in the middle of the Gulf Stream, probably 25 miles from West End, and I guess about 35 from, from St. Lucie Inlet. Water's really pretty out here, this deep, deep blue color. Just have the main up there right now. It is uh, double reefed and lashed into the very, very middle of the boat. Basically the only purpose the main is serving right now is just kind of uh, a stabilizer so that the boat doesn't roll as much. And that's all it's doing. Pretty much no wind out here right now. Uh, the current is sweeping us basically two knots that way. Uh, our target is basically over there and we're aimed this way and we're just gradually kind of drifting over that way towards the St. Lucie Inlet. Always kind of depressing uh, to leave that gorgeous water and those amazing beaches. It's just such a great place for us. And uh, But at the same time, we have some very seriously interested buyers who would like to buy sand flea. So, cutting our season a bit short so we can go ahead and jump on getting a uh, a sale on sand flea so that we can get a jump on the next steps looking for uh, the next bigger boat so we can carry on with our sailing adventures pretty sad to uh, to be thinking that this is one of our last little trips on sand flea but actually depending on how it uh, how it shakes down with a couple of these buyers um, there may actually be a delivery involved so we may have a, another little trip yet to come but we'll, we'll see how that goes we shall see molly anything you'd like to say um i just hope we get this safely We're out here in the middle of the Gulf Stream. The engine is mysteriously overheating. This is like the fourth time this has happened. I can't figure it out. Here, Tambi. Watch, watch that. Try to keep the steering straight if the autopilot, you know, freaks out. I've cleaned the sea strainer. I've purged the lines over and over. It hasn't got so hot that the alarm has been going off yet. But it is getting pretty darn hot, so I have to keep shutting it down. There's no wind out here. I can't, I mean, we can't sail. Uh, my thought now is maybe something's going on with the impeller. Uh, if it's not that, I think I've got some seagrass or something that got past the strainer, I guess. Um, I'm going to take a look at the impeller, see what's going on in there. Everything okay up there, Tamby? Yeah. Water pump feels hot. That's not usually a good sign. All right, cut that clip on. Oh, the impeller's freaking destroyed. Look at that. It's just, it's just gone. Broken pieces in here, and I am, I'm not gonna be able to track them all down right now. I'm just gonna have to get this out and, and roll with it. Okay, this has to go, this has to go this way. This so thing has to go in like that. This. 
It should still be primed since I turned the water off before I put on the impeller. All right, so let's give that a shot. Free primed. That is what we'd like to see. We are now cooling again. The this, impeller was broken into pieces. This is a three knot current that we're in right here. Uh, we've had the, we've been having a cooling problem like all morning, just intermittent. Like it would come and go and come and go. And I, I thought it was like, a, I, I cleaned out the strainer and there was a little bit of stuff in there. I, I thought maybe that was it. Uh, and then it overheated again. And I was like, okay, well maybe, maybe there's like, I didn't get all the air out of the lines. So I got all the air out of the lines and it happened again. I cannot figure out what the heck it was. And uh, turns out the impeller was just like <laughs> exploded in there. Crazy day. This is the risky part of doing some kind of Gulf Stream crossing like this in no wind. Luckily, it's just, you know, super light, clear day. I mean, we could call Towboat US if it was like a, a major problem, but we, we are, we're cooling very well again now. See how low that is, Sandy? Oh, yeah. Uh, what, what else was I going to say? Like, we're, we're down here at like one... 20 130 somewhere in there it was it was more consistent at like 180 so keep spares with you and know how to install them my goodness
right guys, here we are at our first anchorage after our return from the Bahamas. Does anybody recognize this place? Uh, uh, uh. You go in the St. Lucie Inlet and then you hang a left. This is Manatee Pocket. Isn't yep. that right, Molly? Yep. Now, we are anchored for the first time in the brown, yucky water again. It's going to be an adjustment period now uh, as we reaccustom ourselves to, uh, you know, life uh, along the ICW in Florida and such as that, and not in the Bahamas. There's going to be a period of adjustment, so I'm going to need for everybody to just bear with my bad attitude, you know, as I get used to this filthy water again. It's nasty, nasty water. It's probably got, you know, bacteria in it and... I don't know. Really, it's bad. By the way, this trip today took us 12 hours uh, from the anchorage just outside of uh, West End to Manatee Pocket. I guess in all fairness, it took us more like 11 hours to get back to the States and then, you know, one hour more to get to Manatee Pocket, but it was a 12 hour day. Long day. Yeah. It was a good day though. Yep. Not, not too bad. I mean, nothing too dramatic happened. Right, Tammy? It's ramen for dinner. Isn't that right, Tambi? That's right. Dinner of champions after this very long, demanding, arduous, challenging day. That's right. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It actually sounds, I'm, I'm just picking on you about the ramen. Nothing wrong with that. It actually sounds, it sounds oddly, it sounds just perfect. right for tonight. Yes. And I don't use the little yucky packets that come with it. I spice it up myself. Yeah, when we have ramen, she ditches the little pack. Because they're up bad with... for you. Yeah, yeah. And the noodles... Uh, unlike the noodles. Yeah, the noodles are probably bad for you <laughs> yeah. too because they're fried. But at least uh, it doesn't have all the sodium that the little packet yeah, has Yeah, yeah, for sure. I just I just thought it was funny. First meal back is wrong. Anyways, just thought that was mm. interesting to share. It's so good though. So good. Good job, honey. That... Good... Thank you. Good, good job, Molly. Good job, Tambi. Good job, Molly. Good job... <laughs> Got both of you. Okay, all right, stop, stop. Hey, one other thing I wanted to kind of explain is uh, why we've made the decision to motor across the Gulf Stream. You know, we get all kinds of crap about, you know, pretty much if you have a sailboat and you make a YouTube video and you show yourself motoring, people are like, Why'd you even get a sailboat in the first place if you're gonna motor everywhere? You know, we get that stuff sometimes. But here's an example of why we're motoring today. Basically, we had today, which is no wind. We could motor all the way across the Gulf Stream, and it would cost us about five gallons of diesel to do so. Or we could wait at the marina at West End for four days while there is uh, strong winds blowing with the northerly component where you can't cross the Gulf Stream, and we would burn approximately $400 for a chance to be able to sail across the Gulf Stream, you know, in another five days or so. So, I hope that logic kind of explains why we choose to motor from time to time. It's just, uh, you know, really comes down to that. Five gallons of diesel, or $400 spent in a marina. Yeah. <laughs>